Right bro, when you think of superfoods, you probably think of things like kale, watercress, chia seeds. But have you ever considered why you think that? And if it's actually true, right? Because this is something that's dawned on me recently, that I've done no research into, well I have done research, this is why I'm making this video, but to come to the conclusion that these things are superfoods wasn't my own research. I've trust in outside influences. So when I actually do my own research and think logically about it, these aren't the foods I would consider as superfoods. So if we do pros and cons of certain foods, we'll try and figure out which are actual superfoods, right? So these ones, I believe we've just been conditioned by somebody to put them in the category of superfoods, and I'm not sure why, right? So take kale, for example. Kale is a plant, it's green, it's designed to be camouflaged in against its environment, and it doesn't want to be eaten. It's an organism that wants to survive. In order to do that, it puts loads of defense chemicals into the leaves of its plant. Now a fruit is different, it will be brightly colored so it can be seen, it will be taste sweet so it's palatable to animals that eat it. And that's because the plant wants the fruit to be eaten so you distribute the seeds further away so you're propagating the plant. Something like kale isn't like that, it's not a fruit, it's a leaf. So it's full of de defense chemicals and anti-nutrients which tell your taste receptors, this is why kale tastes like it tells your taste receptors that this isn't a good thing to be eating so you stop eating it. It disrupts your digestive system as another mechanism to try and get you to stop eating that food again in the future so the kale can survive. It also isn't very calorie dense so if you compare something like broccoli, I don't know about kale off the top of my head, but broccoli has 10 times less calories than, than beef mince. So even calorically, it doesn't have as much nutrition in it. So this is not a superfood. It's full of defense chemicals. It doesn't have any calories and it's trying to be camouflaged so you can't even see it, right? So that doesn't sound like a superfood to me. And then you take chia seeds. Seeds are the most highly defended part of a plant chemically with these defense chemicals because a seed is like the baby plant and it has no other way of defending itself. So they're full of defense chemicals. So seeds are one of the worst plant foods you can eat. So chia seeds, and if you tried eating kale and chia seeds or even watercress, you can't even eat them. I remember I first tried chia seeds because I heard it was a superfood. You're chewing them for about three days. They just don't go anywhere. It's, yeah, I don't know, it's not for me. And it logically, that doesn't seem like a superfood. There's too many drawbacks and downsides. Whereas you take something like beef. Beef is calorically dense, a lot of calories per 100 grams, a lot of nutrition, and there aren't any defense chemicals or negatives that are, or anti-nutrients that are gonna stop you digesting that food and assimilating the nutrition. So if you've done your research into food, this might be quite obvious to you. Plants have got defense chemicals and all of the, everything I just said, basically. It brought into question me assumptions we make based on common knowledge. So to me now, I consider beef and eggs to be superfoods. If you want calories, nutrition, energy, if you want to satiate the body, or if I want to satiate the body, I'm gonna go for beef and eggs straight away. That's my first port of call. It's not gonna be kale, chia seeds and watercress because I believe they're superfoods. But if you say that to somebody, it's not common knowledge. So, so the second point I kind of came to when I was logically thinking about this is the term superfood, the actual word, has been hijacked or what's another way, subverted into something that isn't a superfood. And if that can be done with one word, like superfood, it can be done with other things. So it got me thinking if the term superfood can be rebranded and confused so that when you think of superfoods, you instantly think of a salad when that isn't superfoods. What else has been 
rebranded so that you can so that something comes to mind when it's represents something else so to me an example i i thought of was the rainbow when you see a rainbow like a little rainbow logo or picture you think of the lgbt community right that's the first thing that comes to my mind now when really before that was a thing the first thing that would have come to mind was rain or time in nature or a beautiful like down here normally if there's a rainbow if you come to somewhere like this you get a good view of it but they're not the associations that come to mind anymore the first thing i think of is gay pride or something like that now there's nothing wrong with gay pride i think everybody should be happy and do what they want but the rainbow has now been rebranded so whenever i see it and probably whenever you see it you think of something and not something else so when you when you hear the word superfood you instantly think of veg and plants you don't think of meat and eggs or at least you probably don't i don't and when you see a little rainbow you don't think of time in nature the last rainbow you saw when you see a rainbow logo you can't remember the last time you saw it uh, it was hammering it down with rain and you went and saw a beautiful rainbow that's not what comes to mind and it's weird that that isn't what comes to mind because that's the closest association you take a rainbow that's quite abstract and far away from the lgbt community so that seems weird to me that you can rebrand words and it's worth considering what other words has that happened with now i'm not saying why this is the case it just seems interesting to me that it is the case you instantly think superfoods i'll have a salad they don't taste great they don't want to be eaten they're full of defense chemicals and they've got no calories now when i think superfoods i think steak and eggs and i don't know if that's the same for you just a beach thought of the day getting some barefoot walking sunlight in the eyes I guess the point I'm trying to make and the conclusion that I come to is words and symbols take you out of reality. So the word superfood, if you have connotations to kale, so let's just assume nobody knows what superfoods are, right? I might be wrong that beef and eggs are superfoods. It might be kale, but let's just say nobody knows. But there is a truth, right? Let's just say seaweed. We've got seaweed in the, in the water here. That's what superfood is. But when I hear the word superfood, I think of beef and eggs. And when you hear the word superfood, you think of kale. And we both believe we're right. The reality is different. The reality is it's seaweed, right? So words have taken us out of reality and further away from truth. So when I think superfood, I think beef and eggs, and I'm wrong because it's seaweed. When you think superfood, you think kale, and you're wrong because it's actually seaweed. Now, it's okay if your words and symbols point to the truth. So if the word superfood, for everybody in the world, pointed to seaweed, and seaweed was the right answer, then the word is reality. And I think it's interesting that in the Bible, it says in the beginning was the, was the word. So this is why I've considered this, because it's quite powerful. Because if your words are pointing you to something that isn't real, or something that isn't true, then that's dangerous. So when I see a little rainbow logo or rainbow symbol, I instantly think of something, and you instantly think of something. And all words and all symbols are like this. So you might see a crucifix, the Christian logo if you like or symbol and you will have a reaction to that and i see it and i have a different reaction and i might see a different religious symbol and have a certain reaction but that might not be the truth i'm having a reaction for some reason it's like if you see somebody now i don't want to offend anyone but if you see somebody wearing a turban you might have a a reaction to that because of how you've been brought up or how you've been exposed to certain media and like for example a burqa and i know this to be true because how i respond to turbans and burqas has changed throughout my life and 
the initial connotations. For example, when I was a child, if I see, I believe the burqa is the, like the full dress where women are covered except for their eyes. When I was a kid, I would instantly think strange person. Now, I think, so my instance, uh, the connotations to that image, that symbol of a woman wearing a burqa, I might be wrong, it might not be called a burqa, but you know what I mean, the fully covered clothing. I instantly thought, oh, strange person, because they're different to me. I've never been exposed to that in my culture. Now, when I see that, I think somebody with very strong values and good, a code of conduct. And I see that as a, a hugely positive thing. And I used to think strange. Same with religion. My family is not religious. And I used to think, oh, strange people. Now I think people with very strong morals and values. So that's changed. Which one's right? Do you know what I mean? The symbol is the same, but my truth or my interpretation of it is different. And if you're being conditioned by somebody to associate these symbols in a certain way, it might not necessarily be the truth and it might not necessarily be in your best interest. So I'll give you another example. I went to Turkey recently and they have the prayer song as the sun sets. I can't remember the name of it, Call to Prayer. And now when I hear that, when I went, I knew that was going to be a thing. It didn't take me by surprise. And it sounded absolutely beautiful. And it was like music to my ears and it was a very nice experience twice a day, I think, where I was. I know sometimes it's more. And when I'd hear it, and I was with my mum and I was like, oh, that's so nice, isn't it? To just sit and like meditate as that's playing. But I'm sure if I'd have gone with my dad or with my dad a few years ago, he would have been like, that's weird. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's strange. Now, I'm not saying my dad's like, you know, <laughs> but he has his own perceptions and his own reality based on that thing. And mine has changed because I've questioned who's programming me. My dad has programmed me a certain way and now I've questioned it for myself. Actually, I have positive connotations. So who's right? Do you know what I mean? Who's, who's hit the truth? And why do two people have such a different experience of the same thing? I don't know, boys. But you get the point. Do you know what I mean? Most people from the same country are the same religion. I hope that makes sense. <laughs>